Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist and in this video we are going to talk about how to improve your students behavior in the classroom using goal setting. Before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would love for you to do that now and then also hit the little bell so that you don't miss out on any of the new videos that I post about teaching. Okay, so let's talk behavior. As teachers in the elementary grades, but probably also in the middle grades and even high school, not only are we responsible for teaching the content, how to read, how to write, but also the behaviors, right? Because part of growing up, part of learning is also learning how to regulate your own behavior, all those executive functioning skills, impulse control. And so as teachers, we have to teach kids these things, which can, which can really feel like a big job, right? Because you're like, well, I gotta teach the academic stuff. I gotta make sure that behaviors don't interfere with getting the academic stuff done. And that can be kind of stressful, right? So that's why I wanna tackle this topic in this video. And first, I just wanna say that from the very first day of school, using effective classroom management strategies is key. But at the same time, even if you had a rough start to the year or you thought you had a good start and then later on things aren't going well, wherever you are in your school year, where it's the beginning or later on, it's never too late to implement something new. Sometimes kids just like need a reset, right? And so I think at the, at the very foundation of all that you're doing, of course, and all the strategies that I'm gonna share here, we need to make sure that again, from the first day of school, we are building strong relationships with students because none of this stuff that I'm gonna share is gonna be that effective if you don't have that connection with kids. And granted, some kids are harder to connect with than others. So it's just like part of being a human, right? Like you connect easily with some people, you are fast friends with them, and with others, it's just harder to connect. And so kids are no different, but we're in the position where we need to make that effort to connect with them from day one, to learn what makes them tick, to help them feel like they're an important part of the classroom. So really relationships are kind of the foundation of everything. Now, even though you might be great at building relationships, sometimes it seems like, you know, and maybe you have a ton of strategies that you already use with students. Sometimes it seems like things just don't click for a child or a couple of kids or maybe even an entire class. So let me know in the comments and I think it will be helpful for other teachers to see that they're not alone too. Um, do you ever feel like you try tons and tons of different strategies when it comes to classroom management, but with some kids, it feels like nothing works? Let me know in the comment, just say like, tried it all if you've ever had that experience, because I have definitely had that experience too, but what I'm gonna share in this video has helped me and I know that it can help you and your students too. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, developing good behaviors, positive behaviors, is all about teaching kids to control their impulses, self-regulate, you know, develop some of those um, executive functioning skills that are important for the classroom, but also just life in general and being a happy human. And some of those skills can be really hard for our kids. But research, one thing that we know from research is that students respond best when expectations are phrased in positive language. So if like it's during carpet time, right, circle time, and your students are calling out, right? Like some of them are just shouting out answers. They're not raising their hand. Instead of saying, okay, I need you to stop blurting out, what you can say instead is raise your hand nice and tall if you would like a turn to share your idea. Something that I do related to that specifically is we put one finger on our lips and then we raise our hands indicating that we are waiting quietly. But my point here was that you want to, whatever you want them to do, whatever you want that to look like, you want to phrase it positively versus saying, you don't wanna say what they shouldn't do, which is stop blurting out because sometimes kids' brains will focus on blurting out that blurting out part rather than what they should be doing instead, which is whatever your expectation is. And then after you set that expectation in a positive way, you want to provide positive reinforcement. So if you notice some kids doing it, say, oh my goodness, look at Desiree. She is raising her hand nice and tall with a finger on her lips, right? You wanna call out those students when you're doing it, especially those kids that are struggling. You wanna make it a big deal when they follow directions so that hopefully they want to do that again in a future, in the future. Another thing we can do to support students is break things down into bite-sized manageable chunks or goals. 
So let's say that a student has been having a really hard time staying on task. Super common, right? It happens. And you know, your ultimate goal as a teacher is for them to stay on task during the entire school day. However, for a child, a full school day is a long time. So instead of setting the goal to be like, stay on task the whole school day, let's break it down. Think about which part of the day you want them to focus on first. And so instead of saying, okay, if you stay on task all day, then I'm gonna send a positive note home to you know whoever their parents are or caregivers, guardians, and let them know. Instead of saying that, like let's do the whole day, let's say, hey, if you can stay in your, on your carpet seat for read to self time today for five minutes, I'll set the timer. If you can keep your eyes on your own book for those five minutes, then I'm gonna send a positive note home with, you know, with a sticker or whatever you're doing to let mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever know that you did this. So again, instead of saying, we're gonna do this for the whole day at first, just focus on one little part and then you can add on more as time goes on. It can be challenging, right? Cause you're like, well, I really need them to stay on task the whole day, but the reality is we need to start small. And you know, if they experience success there, then we can start working our way up to the point where they can manage staying on task the whole school day. Something that can also be really helpful to kids in achieving these little goals that you're setting are visuals. Visuals are just, you know, a little reminder. I mean, you can have words if they can read or even if they can't, you can have words for the adults and little pictures to go with them. And these are just a really good support that kids can keep with them throughout the day, or you can just switch it out. Okay, now it's work time, you're working on this. You could also laminate these and have them on a little binder ring and they have to flip to the correct time of day. Like this one says work time, it just says, stay in my seat, try my best, raise my hand if I need help, finish my work. So this is actually coming from a bonus that my literacy club members got a while back, but they have these not only for work time, but they have them for arrival time, recess, lunch time, and there's editable ones too. So you can fully make these your own and include your expectations on them. And it's all about breaking things down and giving kids a visual reminder of what their goals are for each chunk of the day. Some kids may only need it for like one chunk of the day. Some kids may need it for multiple chunks, right? But it's always there, always a good reminder of what their goals are. And with these, all of the expectations, like we talked about earlier in this video, are positively phrased. So it's stay in my seat rather than don't get up and walk around or you know, raise my hand if I need help rather than don't call out or don't blurt out. So it's phrased positively, right? And you can use this with specific students, you can use it with a group of students, you can use it with the whole class, right? The, the options are endless. And again, if you're a literacy club member, you have this as a bonus and there's also editable ones so that you can make them your own. And all of this just comes back to making our objectives for our students really clear to them and teaching them how to think about what they should be doing and self-regulate so that they can exhibit those behaviors, develop those executive functioning skills with our support and be successful. Because ultimately, you may have a struggling student, a kid who's really struggling with behaviors, but ultimately all kids wanna be successful. So anything that we can do to make it easier for them to get there is a win for us and of course a win for the kiddo too. Okay, I hope that this was helpful. If you are a Literacy Club member, definitely make sure to check out your login area to grab this bonus. If you need any help finding it, let me know. If you're not a Literacy Club member and don't know what that is, my Literacy Clubs are a membership. And it's actually, you know, we have little behavior bonuses like this, but the Literacy Clubs are actually about providing differentiated literacy resources to your students. Every month, our members get brand new small group decodables and lesson plans and then they get a ton of center activities and everything is differentiated. So that means that you get one book or one passage or one activity at a variety of skill levels so that you can meet the needs of your students. Because the reality is, is that we come into our classrooms and we have kids at a range of levels and it's not possible for us as teachers to spend like hours and hours and hours every week coming up with different activities to meet each child's needs. So what you really need is to have these materials that are already differentiated, prepared for you. You get them every month, it saves you a ton of time, and it allows you to provide really excellent instruction for your students. So literacy clubs are about way more than just behavior, although we have some goodies like these in the clubs for you. 
If you're interested in learning more or getting on the wait list, definitely check out the caption of this video. Would love to have you as a member and help you save time and help your students be successful as well. All right, I hope this video was helpful, helpful and gave you some ideas for behavior management. Before you leave, it would mean so much to me if you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next video.